My void will consume you, if you ask nicely. Your will is no longer your own. Stay away from them. To us! For the horde! You have let the horde to place without honor. Your petty quarrels only make me stronger. Our world needs us, Jump. You got you all be your we cannot let the world fall to darkness. We're already lost. Put your faith in the light, and all is possible. Is it truly righteousness that drives you? No! I wonder. It would seem you have guessed. They are coming for you. This is the whispers of wars. Of wars. Hello everyone and welcome to Whispers of War, show 136. I'm your host Sil and let's jump into how was my week in Warcraft. Um, as you guys might have noticed, last week I took a week uh, off, so <laughs> there was no show. I was going to play a lot of Warcraft, but then we decided that, um, you know, you know when you have to do spring cleaning? Well, you don't have to, but you want to or it's necessary. Um, yeah, we basically postponed our spring cleaning and that happened this week. So, um, I did play, uh, in the mornings a lot, but then, you know, in the afternoons it was time to scrub everything, um, which, you know, is, is good. I, I feel I'm personally one of those people who, uh, do really well when everything is tidied and clean and it's just, you know, a little bit better for my headspace. Um, but not lots of World of Warcraft at time, unfortunately. I did do several things. So with the patch out, I decided, okay, well, it's the second week. Uh, I could get flying now, so let's focus on that just to see how it works also for alts. I did all of that. I, I'm, I'm okay with the campaign, also with the Corfia stuff that you have to do. I can't say that I'm super into it. Um... I, I don't know what it is, but there's something that is just disconnecting me from really wanting to dive into even the lore, uh, which which baffles me a little bit because that's the one thing that always pulls me back. I don't know because it's so, um, I don't want to say alien, but because it's it doesn't feel super like Warcraft anymore to me. I, I don't know what it is. Again, I can't put my finger on it. There's nothing bad about it. But it's just not appealing to me. So I just did the quest and I thought, okay, well, at least, you know, it keeps me occupied. I I like the, uh, and I'm probably saying, giving it the wrong name, but the um, special battles that you get from the Covenants in the Ma. I thought that was a lot of fun. Um, the one with the Venfir was really, really fun. The one with the... <laughs> the Kyrians was... Um, okay bit boring but it was okay <laughs> I mean it was quick so I'm not I'm not having any complaints um, but I managed to get renowned 44 and basically when I handed something else in I immediately went to 45 which was great because I wanted that to get that new mount because I think the the new mounts I think for all covenants are really really pretty um, I don't know if I'll continue with the renown just to get a reskin color of it uh, that's not really, you know, that doesn't really do it for me. I guess for mount collectors, sure. But for me, it's not really an incentive. But I like that mount that we got. Because uh, I'm with the Night Fae and I think anything that looks a little bit like a fox and a dragon combined is A-OK -okay with me. Uh, so yeah, flying and then I basically dropped my mates like a hot potato. And I uh, decided to check it out on my Rogue. And yeah, um, you immediately can fly, which is great. Uh, you don't, because I was a little bit afraid that I would have to be 60 for it, and I thought that's going to be really horrible. <laughs> but no, you can just fly uh, at the lower levels, which is perfect. But this is where I'm a little bit like, mm. okay, flying goes quicker, so probably your dailies go quicker as well. But to get two and a half more levels just by doing. Uh, daily quests 
I am not a world quest. I'm not entirely sure if I want to do that. Uh, I know I can just crank a few out and get it, but it's just not so appealing to me anymore. Because a lot of these quests are also the same. You know, once you've done them, it just recycles into like a few days later, you get it again. And I'm I'm just not really sure if I'm up for doing that. You know, I always feel like. A game needs to get you to want to play and not feel like you have to play. And that's where the problem lies. And, and I think personally it's also finding that right class, which I've had a lot of issues with in Shadowlands anyway. Um, and I was thinking maybe looking at what's on offer, I should really try out a demon hunter and a hunter just to see if that might interest me. I'm going to try out more classes. I, I will try out more classes. But I'm just not feeling it. And I think it's just because it's it's just the Shadowlands again and I just don't feel super into it. Um, which is again, you know, it really really surprises me because Shadowlands has everything that should appeal to me. You know, it's about the afterlife. I like the different covenants. I like the idea of joining a covenant and having those stories accessible for more lore. Uh, seeing more lore characters from World of Warcraft's history. But it's just... There's something there that just is not gripping me. And I don't know what it is. And uh, I know I'm not alone. And there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I'm, I know that there's a lot of people who are really enjoying 9.1 and that's great. Um, I would never shit on something just because I don't like it. I'm very happy that there are people out there who are incredibly enjoying what they're doing. But I think for me and what I enjoy doing in the game, it's just not there at this point in time. And I will continue playing because uh, I, I do want to find that one class that will appeal to me more because I have a suspicion that it's that I need to just find the right class and just um, and this might be a very RP way I need to connect with a character again and that's quite difficult at the moment because none of them really speak to me so I'm just like mm, yeah whatever um, so I don't know yet I don't know what I have to do maybe I need to roll a completely new character and just start from the beginning that sometimes helps uh, and I have some spots because I actually deleted some alts <laughs> that I wasn't going to play anymore. I've been really, really harsh with what I've done and I just thought, okay, yeah, there's no appeal. I once rolled you for RP reasons, but that story has ended and I don't really want to continue playing with you. So I have actually been really hard with my, uh, with my space of characters. So maybe I should do that. I am not sure, but you know, maybe you guys have struggled with this, with this if you did and you're playing again, please let me know what you did because that always works. I'm not going to unsub, I never really do anyway, um, but I might just dive back into classic a little bit more because <laughs> when I did play a little bit this week, I did enjoy it a lot, a lot more than I enjoyed 9.1 content. So no matter what, I will still be playing World of Warcraft. <laughs> But I don't think I'll be grinding up to Renown, what is it, 80 or 90. That's, I, yeah, I don't think that will happen. Um, but yeah, I'm just hoping to find a new class that, that will suit me and that I enjoy playing uh, and a character. And yeah, just continue from there. But um, I'm hoping that you guys had a, had a much better time at 9.1. I think you did, which is great. And um, we'll talk about that. But first, I have a lovely interview. Um, I, I just want to say to everyone, from now onwards, <laughs> these interviews have all been taking place in, I think, April, May. Uh, so some of the stuff that's being said is a little bit old now, uh, especially with things how I felt about certain things that has changed in the meantime. Uh, so take it with a pinch of salt. <laughs> but, but the main stuff still stands. So enjoy the interviews. And uh, yeah, I'll, uh, I'll come back afterwards. But enjoy the interview I had with Caxman. And I'll talk about 9.1 and what you guys thought after. So see you on the flip side. Uh, 
And with me today, I'm being joined by yet another brand new guest, and he has a lovely English voice. I, I think it is falls on the English, or you know, I, I never quite know with the British where they they fall under all of that. But welcome, Kexman. Thank you for having me on. It is indeed an English accent. And okay. <laughs> It's one that I've heard a lot of people have said that I sound quite quite posh. I'm not sure why because I'm from the the middle of the middle of a farming region, so I'm not sure why I sound that posh, but no, it definitely is it definitely is an English accent. Okay, well, in all fairness, um a uh, little confession. I I live in a farmer's region and you don't sound uh like the farmer region where I'm from. So <laughs> it's it's it sounds quite posh. So I would take that and just run with it. Yeah, it's it's what I've. I mean, it's one of those things where I've kind of got used to it now. I mean, the big one is obviously whenever I speak to anyone from America, and they're always like, "Oh wow, you're you such an English accent." I'm like, I, see, obviously for me, I don't hear it. It's just my voice, so it never really, it never really bothers me or, or makes me realize, oh, I do have such. I've got a very very posh English accent. Never comes to <laughs> mind because it's it's just how I sound and how I've always sounded. Yeah, but it's good. It's, I think you know it's nice to to have different accents, as even when you're in like the UK, to just hear different accents. I think it was um, for people like me who are foreign. Uh, it can sometimes become a little bit difficult when uh, when you don't have, um, as I like to call it, the standard English way of speaking, um, the Oxford way. <laughs> That's, obviously, you know, <laughs> obviously, then it all of a sudden becomes a little bit difficult, and it's like what are they saying like the first time no offense but the first time i heard someone with a really strong welsh accent i had a really hard time understanding what they were saying yeah it's i mean where i am it's it's a bit odd because you sort of go 45 minutes to the north and all of a sudden you've got people with really thick birmingham accents <laughs> you go 45 minutes to the east uh, to the west sorry and you've got people with really strong welsh accents and then you go 45 minutes to the south and then you've got really strong bristolian accents so we're just kind of surrounded by all these strong accents so over the <laughs> years i've i've kind of got used to it a little bit there are still a couple of of different sort of slang words that various different places use that i'm still not 100 percent on but it's it's part and parcel of living in the uk i suppose yeah, and I think there's nothing wrong with that. It makes it all uh, quite diverse and nice, I think, actually. It's just, you know, like I said, I have to get used to it. But once you've lived in Devon, you kind of, like, learn to live with everything. And it's so close to the border of Cornwall. Once you can start understanding that, you kind of understand it all. So, yeah, you know, no no offense to anyone in Cornwall uh, saying that, but it was hard in the beginning. <laughs> Anyhow. Because <laughs> be everyone's down there. Is my lover? How you doing, my lover? Everyone know, down I there. I just didn't get it. And it was things like, oh, in, in it. And I thought, in yeah, what? In it. In, and in, I in thought, what, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't get it. I don't, what? <laughs> it's just <laughs> really confusing. Um, but, you know, you get used to it after so many years. And it's quite yeah. endearing, I think, all the local uh, accents as well. Oh, massively. Um, yeah, yeah. I think it makes it makes... You know, it makes the UK unique, but you know, false advertisement because I always thought seeing all those movies that everyone talked like Kara Knightley and John Cleese and Hugh Grant, and that's not, not the case. No, not, not quite. <laughs> so, you know, that's another a mystery solved for, for everyone who's not from the UK. Now you know. Um, <laughs> shall we talk a little bit about yourself though, instead of just the accents? Um, why don't you tell a little bit about who you are and what you do on the internet? Uh, so yeah, my name is obviously Kexman. I have been, I suppose, I, I grew up with the internet. The sort of, you know, the the way the internet advanced into into homes late nineties, early two thousands. That was sort of when I was starting to. That was my start of my teenage years, and I just kind of grew up with it, playing obviously various different games. Uh, World of Warcraft was one of them. Uh, back with the original Warcraft radio that was. Mm kind of really grew to grew to prominence during the time that Total Biscuit was the station manager. I was actually hired uh, alongside a friend of mine uh, called Farsia. Um, <laughs> we were hired by Total Biscuit to host a uh, RP show on the original Warcraft radio. We did that for about two and a half to three years until it finally folded. Everyone went their separate ways. And then recently, uh, I say recently, actually, it's probably 
it's a year and a half now. Um, the original station owner, Athelus, got together with a bunch of us, myself and Farsir included, uh, and we restarted Warcraft Radio. We still have weekly shows on there. Um, I help out with podcasts. I guest on a couple of them. I help out with if we've got anything that we need to market. Uh, but also from that, I've also sort of stepped into the world of esports. Uh, recently, I've been doing a lot of esports casting with Diabolus. Uh, during their Death Bowl, as well as Oasis, when they have been doing their various different events. So I've been casting for them. And recently, I, I was also able to cast some Halo uh, on the esports oh, wow. scene as well. Um, and on top of all of that, I think the biggest one was uh, taking part in the Race to World First, where mm. I was casting for Echo. So uh, in the previous one in, in Castle Nathria. So yeah, it's the, the last couple of months have been a little bit of a whirlwind, to be honest. The last sort of like six months casting, um, various different shows on Warcraft Radio. Obviously, BlizzCon Line, we had almost a 24-hour coverage during the entirety of BlizzCon Line with various different shows. I was a big part of that. And it's definitely been... It's definitely been an experience over the last 15 years, 20 years with the internet. And I'm looking forward to seeing what the next 15 to 20 years holds as well. Yeah, I bet. That sounds absolutely like a whirlwind, but so cool. So incredibly cool, the stuff that you've done and are still doing. Um, but the esports, because that must be, you know, I, I always, when I hear it, I always think, okay, so is it like when you uh, see people who, you know, when the football is on and you see the commentators do all these things, do, how do you prep for that? Because it seems quite chaotic at times. Um how how do you you know what sort of mental state do you get in to make sure that you are doing the right things because it's completely different than a, a normal radio show yeah it's i mean obviously there's a little bit of prep work that you need to do beforehand you've got the brackets you can see who's playing for what and obviously if you've done casting before you can pick out various different players that you know are going to be some someone to keep an eye on and mm -hmm. you obviously prepare for that but when it comes to the actual uh, when it comes to the actual casting of it, it's very much a by the seat of your pants. You kind of have to say, okay, I know something's going to happen and you need to be prepared for that. And I suppose the hardest thing is keeping the energy high because yeah. you obviously have a little bit of downtime in between some of the matches and you can sometimes sit there and kind of go, oh, okay, you know, now we've got to go for a 15 minute break or a 10 minute break. And then we've got to, and then you've got to get back into the, into the actual casting rhythm of it. But mm -hmm. it's, it's not that hard if you've got somebody there that you've been able to bounce off. I mean, I have been very, very lucky. I've been casting with Lithy who does a lot of the uh, German Shadow Ladder, the German AWC stuff as well. He's been commentating on a lot of that. So he is an incredible, incredible announcer. So very, very lucky that I've been able to to kind of almost learn from him and have somebody to bounce off. And not only that, uh, we've also had on the Diablos Death Bowl, at the very least, one of our hosts uh, has been Aya as well, who a lot of you will know from the MDI and the AWC, the official Warcraft events and she is legitimately pro she's she's one of the best in the world at the moment when it comes to hosting events like that and mm -hmm. i think there's there's very very few people that are in the same sort of tier as, as iris at the moment so again i've i've been very very lucky that my introduction to casting has been with those with those two people predominantly by my side and the the team at Diabolus as well uh Nick Sarah quite a few of them have, have all been fantastic and it's if you have a team behind you that is as good as they are it is not it's it's not difficult to kind of keep to keep that hype going because they're always just as hype as as, as we are on the casting desk really cool that's really cool and yeah it's great that you have like I would say colleagues <laughs> I'm just going to use that phrase who right. who uh, that you also vibe off. I think that works really well if you um, if you can keep that energy up. But yeah, I think the commentators are are like a big part of the esports. Otherwise, it will just get really really boring. I guess if if there's no hype like that. Yeah, I mean you can. There's there's a couple of times when I've I've tuned into different games. And if, 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 if it's a different game and there's a smaller tournament, sometimes I'll check it out just to see what they're doing, see if there's anything interesting there. And you can sometimes, especially if you're having a game, a, a series that's going on, you know, for, for quite a while, it can be difficult to find something new to talk about. 
So mm-hmm. you sometimes run into the problem where you'll see casters. They'll that it'll get to a point where they'll be like, okay, so now we're looking at what we saw last game, and it'll it'll just kind of fizzle out a little bit. So I suppose the big, the, the, probably the biggest difficulty in casting, I would I would say, is if you are on say game five of a best of seven series, and you're looking at two teams that have faced each other five times this series and maybe previously in the tournament is finding something new to talk about, finding something to make this game seem different from all the other ones. Mm-hmm. And that that is, you know, even even now, you know, there's there's still a lot of casters that struggle to do that. And I would say that there's there's probably, you know, there's probably a few out there that are very, very good at finding those talking points, but it's it's never easy. No, no, I bet. I bet. Um, what's the next step you think uh, like hosting a, a, a live event like at BlizzCon and just sitting behind the desk that is so that that is obviously a dream uh, mm-hmm. you know, being at a live event and at this point live events it, it, we may see a return later in the year but I wouldn't expect them to start returning until next year so uh, that is something that you know is, is obviously a goal whether it is an official BlizzCon event or whether it's something at a PAX or something you know anything along those mm-hmm. sort of lines I'd love the opportunity to do a live event it would because for me the, the whole point of casting is getting people excited and it's the same with doing a podcast same with doing Twitch streaming at the end of the day you're doing it for the people that are watching you You kind of, I've always said that my goal is if somebody listens to my content or if somebody is having a, someone's having a bad day and they say, I'm going to listen to, I'm going to listen to this podcast or I'm going to watch Kexman stream because they know that I will make them feel better. If that makes sense. If I will give them a smile, give them something to be, to be really focused on that to me is, is, is my goal. And a live event to make along those sort of lines is, is the perfect opportunity to do something like that. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, this is a mean question. From all the things that you do, the the streaming, the the esports hosting, uh, podcasting, if you had to pick, which one is your favorite? That's, I mean, I, it, it depends because I've done, obviously podcasting, I've done a fair bit. And mm-hmm. it's, it's always good to do, you know, I've done shows that have gone out live and then have been, you know, obviously sent out afterwards. I've done pre-records. So there's, you know, that is always really, really good fun because you can kind of get into the nitty gritty of things. Streaming is also a lot of fun because you can kind of be yourself almost. You can do what you want and people will always react to that. And then casting esports, you know, you've got that excitement. You've got that hype. You've got something happening in front of you. And I would say at this point in time, casting is probably the most exciting because it always brings up something. There's always something new there, regardless of what's going on. And, you know, you're, it, is, it is a little bit more of a challenge uh, to a certain degree because of what you are faced with. And mm-hmm. I imagine with, you know, if live events return and I, I get invited to some of those as a caster physically behind a desk... I think it will it will only grow in in the excitement for me. So you know, fingers crossed. I, there's 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 events coming up in the future that I hope to be a part of, and if I am, then then brilliant. It's it's you know, and it's it has been a bit of a bit of a whirlwind with going from not casting to all of a sudden casting the race to world first and WoW esports and a Halo tournament and all this. And it, it you know it, it makes me wonder if this has happened over this six months, what's going to happen in six months' time going forward. I know. Well, I'll certainly be crossing my fingers and my toes for you. Um, Thank you. Because it sounds, you know, that sounds like a great opportunity if that comes up. So, yeah, hopefully um, they will think of you immediately. Okay. Shall we talk a little bit of World of Warcraft? Yeah, let's let's talk some WoW. Okay. So, what everyone always wants to know, Horde or Alliance? Uh, There's obviously only one answer to this, and that is Horde. I have I've been Horde exclusively since World of Warcraft released. I have the Horde logo tattooed on my right arm. I have wow. very everything. I have flags. I it it's the Horde. It always has been, and it always will be. Okay, so never dabbled with the Alliance side. I 
I've I've probably rolled a couple of alts during sort of like podcasts or shows or something like that. Mm-hmm. But I think the closest I've ever come to <laughs> I think the closest I ever came to having an alliance was during the BFA. Uh, sorry, during the Shadowlands pre-patch, where I had a a boost to use a one ten boost. Uh, back when it was 110, and I hadn't used it on anything at that point. I had no interest in playing alts. That's another thing we'll get into probably a little bit later. I don't mm-hmm. play alts. Um, okay. And I think me and a friend of mine were bored one day, and we decided to... I can't remember. All I know is that there are three things. We were bored, we were talking on Discord, and I think we were both eating Pringles at the time. So each one of us made a character on i can't remember what server it was but they were alliance um and i now own a level 49 worgen warlock called paprika pringles and that is about it that's probably the closest i've come to dabbling on the alliance side (laughs) i like it i like it okay so you have no need to to um roll a high level alliance uh to see the story on because i know that on bfa if you wanted to see both stories, you had to really play both sides. Yeah. Uh, but that's not of an interest. Yeah, it was. It was never really something for me. I mean, I've I've never really been interested in kind of the alliance side of things because way uh, realistically, back in the day, uh, you, you know, you think back to classic. The you know when classic was uh, classic. Well, way back in like two thousand five. Mm-hmm. It was kind of one of those where the only real differences between the stories in some respects was, oh, okay, Nomura gone. Congratulations. You know, that, that was about it and maybe stockades. So, you know, I never had any interest then. And then from there on out, there was very, very few chances for the stories to really diverge. They've always essentially been the same thing until BFA where we saw this, this divergence. And there was nothing really... I was trying to think back to what was happening in BFA that would have been interesting and it's it kind of narrows it down to okay you've got the story of Jaina mm-hmm. I, I can see the cinematics for that that doesn't really bother me that effectively tells all the story that I need to know there's a story of the Drust yay okay not, <laughs> not really anything not really anything majorly interesting in there you've got potentially I suppose the story that you've got in Stormsong Valley where there's obviously all the old god stuff and the cultists but once again okay cool uh, not really that interesting whereas on the horde side i only need to say one word and that is buam somebody you know there's, mm. there's not really much else to say about it so yeah i, I there was there's absolutely no there was no impetus for me to go and, and and play an alliance main or play an alliance character not even a main play alliance character during bfa because there's nothing there that really grasped me to be honest yeah, and I think that's fair enough. And um, you know, having played both sides, I have to admit that I enjoyed the Horde story much more in BFA than I did for the Alliance side. But also, I guess that's personal preference because you know, trolls are everything. Yeah. Um, just saying. <laughs> <laughs> so you you have one main, then no alts. Um, who is your main? Who who is going through Shadowlands with you? So. My main is I, I say I don't play alts. There is a there is a little caveat to that, and I'll explain that in just a second. Okay. Um, so my main has and always will be a Tauren warrior called Kexman. I, mm-hmm. I he was the first character I made back in two thousand and five on the Shatar EU, which was my my realm at the time for the longest longest period, and uh, I he has everything that has been in warcraft on the pve side not so much pvp side everything that you can imagine on the pve side he's done uh he's Mm -hmm. you know he's been part of mythic raiding he's been part of you know the original heroic raiding back in cataclysm you know he was he was there killing the lich king he he was doing black temple and burning crusade pretty much everything that you can imagine a, a pve character to do he has done and he will continue to do so in the future because you know a warrior for life realistically however there is a small caveat to this because at the start of shadowlands uh, i joined a guild that were full on melee but mm-hmm. they, they needed a mage okay so i had a 50 boost from my shadowlands uh when i bought the shadowlands and i 
had, you know, I effectively had this this mage that I was ready to do. So I boost, I boosted a mage. Uh, I played through the um, adventure side of the questing experience because I'd already done the story on my on my warrior. And for mm-hmm. two weeks, I raided Castle Nathria as a fire mage until they turned around and they went, actually, we need a tank. And I was like, well, I have something for you. Um, which was at the time the worst tanking class in Shadowlands, the <laughs> warrior. But I, I, I was able to play on my warrior, and I didn't, I didn't realistically care that it was the worst tanking class at that point in time. I was very happy to be back on my warrior, and that's exactly what happened. And it hasn't changed since. Okay, okay, very good. Um, how you know you you said that you played for a long time now. How did it yeah. all start for you? How did you get into World of Warcraft, and when was that turning point that you thought, yeah, I can't leave this game now i i need to continue play to play this so i was growing up i was very very aware of the um warcraft games so warcraft warcraft 2 warcraft 3 and mm-hmm. i i i don't like rts games i never have and i don't know what it is about them i've only ever completed two rts games in my life and that is halo wars 1 and 2 because i am halo fanatic <laughs> Everything else, I'm just like, yeah, okay, it looks cool. Okay, that's that's pretty sweet. But they've never been for me. I was then made aware of World of Warcraft coming out by one of my one of my very very good friends, Farsi, who I did the podcast with originally on Warcraft Radio, and he mentioned that the Warcraft universe was coming and it was going to be this thing called an MMORPG. And I was like, okay, that sounds quite interesting. Mm-hmm. So I thought, you know what, I'll I'll join him. And he'd been playing for for a couple of months at that point. And I said, okay, well, I'll join and see what happens. And I think the turning point for me was probably during the first time I played it when I ended up running to Thunderbluff, because obviously I rolled a Tauren warrior called Kegsman. And I went to Thunderbluff and I was like, okay, this is an actual living, breathing world. I am I am fully invested in this. And it just grew and grew from there to the point where I think the first... <laughs> I'll never forget the... Uh, when Wrath of the Lich King came out, I was still using the family computer. And at that point, this computer had, you know, it was like, it was originally w- running Windows 95 to give you some idea of how old this computer was. And I remember I, you know, even going back to Burning Crusade, uh, there was a very, very famous sort of, not not a chant, but a saying in the guild when we were doing Weather Shiraz is, hope Kexman doesn't get the bomb, because obviously it would teleport you, you'd have to run in separate directions. Unfortunately, uh, with the teleportation, it would it would basically lag up my computer, and it would take about five seconds for me to see a frame. Um, I would I would raid on two FPS, put it that way. Back oh my god. Days. And yeah, I wasn't, I wasn't the, yeah, I wasn't the most popular raider at that point. Uh, but then, <laughs> managed, uh, and, and with Raph, I never actually saw Dalarat because I, I physically couldn't go there. My computer couldn't. Mm-hmm. So I had probably, uh, yeah, I was first couple of months of, of Raph, I never saw Dalaran until I managed to save up enough money, buy my own computer, and I was able to see a glorious, glorious 40 FPS in Dalaran. <laughs> it was beautiful. That's really, really cool. So was that also the moment that you thought, you know what, now that I can see it in full FPS, this is what I want to play for the rest of my uh, my gaming time? Yeah, I think it was, that was definitely, because at that point it was, for me, it was just like, okay, I'll log in, it'll be, it'll be good fun, we'll see what's going on. And then the moment, and I think that the moment I got my new PC was around about the time Ulduar came out. So it was a combination of a brand new computer that I had bought with my own money almost specifically for the purpose of, um, you know, almost almost specifically for the purpose of, of playing WoW. And so I had a brand new computer, all these FPS to use, and Ulduar was out at the same time. And, you know, I think the moment that I saw Thunderbluff was the moment that I said, yeah, this is a game I want to get involved in. The moment that I was in Ulduar at, you know, 40 FPS or whatever it was back in the time when I'd been raiding on 2 FPS on decent graphics as well was the moment i went yeah this is this is something that i'm going to continue to do until it until it drops realistically mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and talking about you know back in the past when when blizzard announced that classic was going to be a thing 
Did you think, oh yeah, I can't wait to play that again. I'll, I'll do that. Uh, I'll make that my main game instead of uh, uh, current World of Warcraft. Or were you like, oh, I'll, I'll just do, go tourist mode. Or how did you do it? So when Classic was announced, I originally went, yeah, that's really cool for the people that care. I'm not one of them. <laughs> and I was I was always very much an advocate of Classic was, was Classic. It was not a good game respective of where wow is now Mm -hmm. and it was something that probably uh, a lot of people saw with rose tinted glasses everyone was talking about the radiant classic and i hate to break it to you folks but the radiant classic was terrible and it still is Mm -hmm. and i i i didn't want a part of classic i said to myself i why would i need to go and revisit something i've already done and not only something that i've done but on top of trying to do what I was doing in retail at the same time. And then the lockdown happened last March. Mm -hmm. And I was, I I didn't have, I I wasn't obviously going to work because when I was working at the time, it wasn't, you know, we were locked down and we were going to be locked down for probably a good couple of months. And I kind of said to myself, do you know what? I think I'll, I think I will try classic. I'll just, as a time waster, and when it first, when it originally dropped, Classic was, it was quite, it was quite fortuitous because Warcraft Radio and Classic WoW were basically released at the same time, almost hand in hand. And I'd played a little bit of Classic WoW. I think I'd gotten my Tauren Warrior called Kexman, surprise, surprise, <laughs> up to 28. And then I remembered what it was like leveling a Tauren Warrior in Classic mm. and I stopped playing. Lockdown hit. I picked it back up, managed to get my Turin Warrior to 60, and I I joined a guild that I was really, really enjoying my time with. And, you know, at that point it was it was it was really, really good fun. I was I wasn't necessarily doing classic because it was classic. I was doing it because I was enjoying my time with the people. I was, you know, I did all of the raids, AQ40, Blackwing Lair, Anixia, everything along those sort of lines pretty much got got pre-raid bis for a lot of my slot uh, uh, pre uh, sorry uh, bis uh, items for most of my slots and mm-hmm. then Max Ramus came out and at the same time Max Ramus came out Shadowlands was out so I was trying to play I was effectively raiding five times five times a week on classic whilst at the same time leveling and trying to gear up my character on retail mm-hmm. Max Ramus came out and I was effectively, I think I, I, I was starting to burn out hard on both. And I kind of said to myself, I need to, you know, I, I need to reevaluate where I am. And then the, and then the big, you know, the, the big moment was when we got to Heigen and the dance in Naxxramas. And I think the first dance that happened during our first attempt, about 85% of the raid died. And at the same sort of time, I was trying to progress in Nathria, and I kind of said to myself, I'm getting burnt out on Warcraft. One of these has to go. I've got mm-hmm. one side that I've already killed this boss before, and I'm having to relearn it. And on the other side, I've got a brand new raid that is a really good challenge of a really, really, you know, it's a really solid starter raid. I've got to choose one. And in the end, Shadowlands, you know, Nathria was always going to be the winner in that one. And kind of since then, I've, I've jumped back into Classic a couple of times with friends to help boost him through dungeons, but I haven't gone back to the level that I was before. Okay. Do you think that will change once Burning Crusade comes out? Uh, probably, yeah. I mean, if, if Blizzard are very, very clever, they will... I know they've said that there's no bearing on either of their release dates for Classic, for TBC, Shadowlands, or, class, or any sort of Classic content, but they would stagger it so that you would have... You know, a, a 9.1 comes out, or you'd have TBC out, and then 9.1 comes out about two months after that, three months after that, and then you have the next stage of TBC, then you have the next, you know, and you stagger it in that way so that there's always something for you to be doing, especially mm-hmm. for different kinds of players, because they've said re- they've said repeatedly that they don't believe that there is much crossover. I would respectfully disagree with that. I think there is a lot of crossover between classic WoW and what we see in retail WoW at this point in time, but. Mm-hmm. Yeah, with with Burning Crusade coming out, I definitely think I will be back again. I got a good group of friends that are all really, really excited for it. A couple of them 
never played Burning Crusade. Some of them were Cataclysm babies, some of them even a Legion baby. So they never experienced places like Karazhan at their proper level. So very, um, very excited to go back and do something like that. Karazhan is one that is really, really cool to experience from Burning Crusade times. Yeah, it, it's... It is, it is one of those that is a, you know, it's, it's not the most difficult raid and it's not the, you know, it is a good looking raid, but there are definitely better looking raids when you come, when you look at art and everything like that. But there's just some, there's, there's a feeling around character mm -hmm. and I don't think anyone could ever place exactly what it is, but it is, is something that everyone sh deserves to experience at least once. Yeah, I definitely agree. Do you think that might change completely if they would ever make a rough specific classic server? I see, I don't think so. I, I've always gone on record as saying that WoW has gone through various different eras in its life, and the classic era ends at Wrath. So your vanilla, your Burning Crusade, and Wrath are what constitutes your classic era. The moment that Cataclysm comes around and you have various different, you, they change the talent trees, there's a couple of different things with leveling, everything along those sort of lines. So Cataclysm, Mist of Pandaria, and Warlords of Draenor, those three constitute what I call the experimentation era. So where they try different things, they add stuff like scenarios, and they've got different leveling talents, and they switch them up, and there's a couple of changes between all of them. They obviously change the, the way that raiding works as well. They figure out how various different things work. And then you move into Legion BFA Shadowlands, which is the modern era of Warcraft at this point, uh, World of Warcraft at this point. So there are three very distinct errors over the lifetime of of WoW. And mm -hmm. I think Wrath is is probably the next candidate for for a classic server. And honestly, I think that should be where it ends because then you just get into that whole situation of you're just retreading the same ground over and over again. But I think a lot of people will play Wrath, but at the same time, I think a lot of people will forget some of the things that Wrath did that weren't fantastic. Wrath was definitely the peak when it comes to subscribers, but gameplay wise, you look at, you know, the 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 old adage of just round them up an AoE, which effectively is what heroics were at that point in time. Mm -hmm. uh, the raiding was fantastic, but then you've also got Trial of the Crusader, which I think everyone can agree is is not the best raid that they've ever done. Um I could I could see a lot of people kind of going back and experiencing Ulduar again. I imagine there are quite a few people that have that are currently playing World of Warcraft that have heard of places like Ulduar in hushed tones, not really understanding what what Ulduar really was like, and this will be their opportunity to go back in and experience that. So, yeah, I, I, I think Wrath will kind of carry on that same sort of feeling, but after that, I don't think that will I don't think that feeling will be there anymore because I think people had enough Dragon Soul when it was current content, and I think the last thing people want to do is go back into it. Yeah. Especially that Deathwing fight. I think uh, I think we don't want to experience that really anymore. Yeah, Spine of Deathwing was 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 fun, shall we say? Actually, well, I say that as a protection warrior, it was fun for me because that was when they introduced dual specs. They had two tanking specs. They obviously had uh, I had my regular tanking spec and then a tanking spec specifically designed for Spine of Deathwing because um, my job was to round up the bloods that consistently spawned during that encounter. Okay. And I had Blood and Thunder, which effectively, back in the day, if you had Rend on one target and you used Thunderclap, it would spread Rend to every single enemy hit by Thunderclap. And my job was just to corral them, keep them working, and I could heroic leap from one side to the other and charge tent and all that sort of stuff. And it got to a <laughs> it got to a it got to a point where at the end of the encounter there was generally about 40 bloods up at that point because of the way the encounter had worked and every single one of them had rend ticking on them at the same time so by the end of the encounter you'd actually for 95 percent of the encounter i would be like dead last on the damage meters mm -hmm. nothing healers would be above me because i would just thunderclap and run that would effectively be it however by the end that last five percent of the fight i would then finish a good 10 to 15 percent above anybody else because you just had all of this rend ticking on all of these creatures you know thunderclap going off and it was it was absolutely fantastic and again it was fun while it lasted i never ever want to go back and experience it in progression again <laughs> Fair enough. Okay, let's talk a little bit about current World of Warcraft then. What are your impressions of Shadowlands so far? 
Uh, I thoroughly enjoy Shadowlands. I know that there are a lot of people that kind of question it to some regard, and Mm -hmm. I kind of understand it to a certain degree, but the way the story's been told, I mean, Castle Nathria has been an unmitigated success. There were a couple of hiccups for some of the bosses, Stone Legion Generals, I'm looking at you. But outside of that, I think they they did a phenomenal job. Um, Nathria's, Nathria's a phenomenal first raid, very, very tightly tuned. The best starting raid of any expansion ever i would say you know the dungeons have been fantastic mythic plus has as a melee has been hideous because there's so many there's so many things there as a melee that are horrible storming and i'm trying to remember what the other one was there's a uh, a second one that features ghosts i cannot remember spiteful so storming and spiteful as a melee is is horrible and i would never ever wish that upon my worst enemies but the dungeons have been fantastic the gearing system whilst there was a couple of hiccups at the start has now actually gone into quite a quite a decent area and torgast as well torgast i thoroughly enjoyed i managed to get my corridor creeper was was great fun but i mean obviously we're in we're in a bit of a lull at this point in time i don't think i think blizzard have underestimated how much of an effect working from home has had on them and that's one of the reasons why this patch is taking so long i think that's that's part of the reason why we're potentially seeing that or at least that's that's what i would imagine looking at it things may may be slightly different behind the scenes but i can only i can only speculate on why what i can see from my point of view and yeah because of that we're, we're in more of a lull than we would normally but i would imagine 9.1 coming out i could see i could see a couple of i could see a couple of extra like uh, probably, yeah, probably a couple of extra things coming in nine point one that we weren't expecting, or we may see a quicker cycle into nine point two. I don't know, but yeah, I'm, I'm enjoying it. I still think it's it's a very very good expansion, but I I tend not to rate an expansion until it's actually completed because you're only getting half the story if you try and do it beforehand, and nobody wants to do that realistically. Yeah, yeah, no, I understand that. Okay. Let's let's stay with um with your Torin then. Yes. Which covenant did you pick for for your Torin and why? So as a Torin warrior, there was at the start it was Venthyr because of mm-hmm. course, and then when I got chose to tank, I switched to Kyrian, which was good fun, and then once once we're kind of now back in this lull you know that we've we've managed to get our curve uh the guild's kind of gone and ver- done various different things at this point in time obviously a lot of people focusing on classic with tbc coming out um we're not doing raids per se i've decided you know what i'm gonna go back to venthyr so i've probably spent 75 to 80 percent of my time in shadowlands as venthyr because condemn I, you know, <laughs> all that needs to be said <laughs> yeah, I hear a lot of warriors say that, so uh, yes. that's that's fair enough. So, did you pick for abilities and and just what is best for the class at that point in time, or was there an ulterior reason besides the condemn? So, condemn obviously played a part in it, but it was also the aesthetic of the whole thing. The armor looks fantastic for warriors. The plate sets look brilliant. I, the rest of the plate sets, the only other plate set I think out of the covenants that looks good is Madraxis. The Kyrian plate set doesn't look good for warriors, I don't think. At least not on a Tauren. I think it might look good maybe on a human if you're that way inclined. But, the, you know, the, the fact that the Ardenweald one is effectively a tree and that's all you're wearing, again, not quite for me. Maldraxxus was was a close second, but just just the idea of, like, having gargoyles on each shoulder was, was a really, really attractive attractive thing and also the ember core as well so i was looking at the various different additional extras that each each covenant get and mm-hmm. the madraxis the whole stitch you know the the you know the abomination factory didn't really interest me but the idea of holding a tea party sign me up <laughs> yeah i uh, i have to admit that is a very attractive uh, thing for for that covenant okay I'm curious though, with, with all that in mind, which of the Shadowlands areas is your favorite? Shadowlands areas, so we're talking about the main sort of like the five main yeah. world zones. Um yeah. I mean, it's gotta be Revendreth, hasn't it? It's it's it has to be. Ardenweald, Ardenweald is, you know, is okay. It's you know, it's not it's 
I mean, it looks good. It, it definitely is the best looking zone Blizzard have ever made outside of original Nagrand. And it, it genuinely does have that wow factor, especially when you fly in and it kind of reveals itself out of the mist. Fantastic. But Revendreth just has, I don't know, there's just something about it. The way that the zone changes, you go from kind of these little villages into this giant castle with its various different districts around it and then you've got a bog running through the middle of it and then this area of, of light where you know people are sent to effectively live out the rest of their days in exile getting getting burnt to a cinder being driven mad and it just i don't know it, it just has a very very there's something about it and i can't quite place my finger on it but it's definitely the zone i feel most comfortable in and the zone i know my way around the most Okay, uh, I think it, it is like all these realms have something very unique, and I, I definitely see why people love Revendreth. I can also see why people don't like it, but all the winding of the of the roads and how you could get somewhere or not get somewhere. Um, but I'm sure with nine point one, that will all change once we can fly, so it yes. will be easier. Um, okay, now if you could create one yourself what sort of realm would you create for the Shadowlands and what would you call it? I would probably create some form of... It's tough to say. I would actually like to see a world where we see a lot of the... A lot of the smaller, uh, a land where we see a lot of the smaller races. So this is a land that is dominated by the stewards, by mm -hmm. people like Tubbins and Gubbins by you know some of the fairies you see almost like the stewards of the shadowlands in okay. one area and i would kind of almost base it on uh, for those folks that have ever played uh, diablo and i would almost base it on the the treasure goblin realm the you know the greed realm where you have a couple of portals and you have all these races and they're ferrying different things across all the various different lands and almost make it like a trading hub for, for lack of a better term and I, I would like to see I'd like to see something along those sort of lines because these these races must have come from somewhere and I really I would imagine with them being as old as they are in the Shadowlands as far as we know mm -hmm. you know the time is a little bit wibbly wobbly in Shadowlands that, that, that something like that would be a something like that would be quite interesting I feel whether or not there'd be a I don't think there'd be a dungeon or a raid there but it'd be quite nice quite a nice little daily zone almost something along the lines of Mechagon or Najatar something something along those sort of lines as in regards to naming it I have no idea I I, <laughs> gen, I have I I imagine there's probably some some name that would fit out there but yeah that would that would be my idea for a Shadowlands zone I'd like to see I like it. That's quite unique, actually. It would be nice to, because it gives a, a little bit more of extra attention to the races that a lot of people glance over, except apparently for the um, the little owls, because everyone seems to love them so much. Yeah, <laughs> well, that would be really... fantastic. Yeah, every, I mean, and so it would be nice to have, you know, a, a like a dedicated realm as well to them and just see where they come from. I'd like to see that. That would be cool. I think it'd be good fun. Yeah. Okay. So you have control now. Uh, and if there was a character that we have come across in the Shadowlands who have passed away uh, for reasons in Azeroth and you're allowed to take him back, who would it be? See, there's, there's definite bias here because one of my favorite characters is Garrosh and we know that he's in 9.1. But uh -huh. I, as much as I love Garrosh, I'm also well aware that he is a terrible, terrible orc. And at no point should be allowed back into the land of the living. I would probably say, out of all of them, I would. I honestly, I would, I would enjoy seeing Ursok back because I feel, I feel as though he, he kind of, he would have been good for storylines potentially down the down the line. I think having Ursok there would have been sort of really interesting for when we come back obviously he could talk about various different things that he experienced and, and he could he could then become more relatable because we would know exactly what he had gone through mm -hmm. and that then could potentially help spawn some storylines from that expand upon the lore of the Shadowlands and how it connects to Azeroth and everything along those sort of lines and 
I mean, thinking back to a lot of people, I mean, there's some very, very obvious answers. You know, you could say, oh, Uther, or, oh, I would like to see Kael'thas back and everything. But realistically, what more would they have to do? They're mm-hmm. more important serving the storyline of, of the Shadowlands exclusively. I think having someone like Ursoc return would probably be would probably be a better idea um, if you know if, if we're looking at something along those sort of lines. Yeah, and I think a big thing as well for druids, I think. Um, yeah, Matt- have Matt Rock back. Yeah, yeah, and and I think everyone who's listening to this is now crying who got really emotional with that video seeing uh, seeing Ursoc as well. But yeah, that's the, I, I like that idea. That is um, something that no one has said before yet. So I think that's a really, really good idea, actually. I, I hope that Blizzard is going to uh, to surprise us in that uh, aspect. That would be really cool. Yeah. Okay. What if it was the other way around? What if you're, you know, you're in Azeroth and you're like, you know what, buddy, I don't like the face of you anymore. You're going to the Shadowlands uh, now permanently. Who is it going to be and where would you dump him? I would take... I would probably take Gen Greymane, <laughs> okay. and I would dump him. See, it would make sense for him to go to Maldraxxus. Mm-hmm. I I feel I feel as though it would make sense. Well, actually, no. Thinking about it, no. Yeah, Maldraxxus probably makes most sense. I would probably dump him in Maldraxxus. I again, just every single time he he, he appears on my screen, I just I see and hear static. It's just it, it, it's it's his basic thing is I'm a dog I fight you that's basically it congratulations you know you're very 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 you know deep and uh, a three dimensional character it, yeah I don't know he there's just Gen just bores me and I feel as though it would be better served if there was somebody that just wasn't as constantly he's he's the he is effectively the the guy that would be stood behind the bully at school going yeah. You know, just not really doing anything. He doesn't do anything. He just he's just angry. Like do something at least. If you're going to be an angry dog, do something. But no, he's just gonna he's just gonna sit there and growl, and that's all he's going to do. I I, I did I did thoroughly enjoy as much as I to a degree dislike the Sylvanas character. I loved that whole cinematic in the Lord of the throne room where she basically tells Anduin to muzzle her dog his dog because that's mm-hmm. effectively what what Gen is. Yeah, it's true. I mean, she she does like to get under his skin uh, in that way. So, yeah, that that's very true to her nature in that sense. Yeah, I think people are very conflicted with, with Gen. I think some people really love him, and other people are like, no, we've had enough now. <laughs> there needs to yeah. be some some change there. Exactly. Okay. Um, let's talk a little bit about 9.1. And I know that... Depending on when this interview comes out, it could be that 9.1 is already upon us, but we are going to talk about it as if it's not. So 9.1, what is one of the features that you're looking forward to the most? So uh, I suppose I suppose I should preface this by saying that potential spoilers here. Um, nothing is, is confirmed. So yeah, potential spoilers. If you don't want to know anything about 9.1, um, just give it five minutes. But I would say the one thing that's the two things that are interesting me the most are Tazavesh, the new dungeon, because I really, really like the style that they've got that they've gone with that, and the boss encounters look really fun. One of them seems to be some form of battle of the bands, where you're constantly facing off against waves of enemies and you're having to use instruments to fight them back. So that looks really fun. And Infinite Pirate Dragon, the most important part of 9.1 is Infinite Pirate Dragon. I'd like to make that known. But the other side of it as well is they've added some stuff into Torghast and we don't know what it is. It's only sort of data streams that have been that have been taken from, you know, people like Mr. GM, Marlamin, Wellhead that have they've kind of taken these from from data mining. But it seems that they've added in a difficulty slider of some degree for Torghast where you can have blessings added or you can potentially add something that will make enemies more difficult or you can... I don't know whether they're going to introduce anything like affixes, but there definitely does seem to be a couple of a couple of different difficulty sliders that will add a little bit more life to Torghast. And I'm interested to get in, test those, and see what they are all about because Torghast to me has been great fun. Okay, okay. Well, that's certainly something to look forward to. Okay, let's let's jump into Faction Pride. 
and I am quite sure what you're going to say, but I still want to, you know, maybe maybe things are different. So with the faction pride and where you stand at the moment for between the Horde and the Alliance, do you think that factions are a thing of the past? Looking at, for instance, this expansion, it is very much, you know, there's not really a thing between Horde and Alliance at the moment. It's just, you know, we're, we're again having a common goal. Uh, we're not at each other's throats at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so maybe m- maybe we should just get rid of the factions. That's what some people think. Or do you feel, no, let's keep the factions, but maybe have a third faction that could either be neutral or one that's uh, against the Horde or the Alliance? Or are you very much of the mindset, no, keep the factions. If it's red, it's dead. Put the war back into Warcraft. Where do you stand? Yes and No. So, <laughs> so I believe that factions are inherent in the system as World of Warcraft. It makes sense for there to be various different factions. The Horde should still have those same, uh, you know, allegiances. They should still have those, you know, the, 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 the Torrens and the Orcs should always be part of a faction because of the way that they have been connected over the years. However. The idea of putting the war back into World of Warcraft doesn't make sense when you consider what we have gone through. Mm-hmm. You look at the amount of world-ending events that World of War that Azeroth has been through in mm-hmm. say the last 10 years of in-game time. And you then want to start up a a war between the two factions doesn't quite sit right with me. Every single, with the exception of BFA, and even BFA changed at the end, we've always, always worked together to defeat the final baddie. Mm-hmm. Arthas, Garrosh, he ex-Horde, but we, we worked together to get rid of him. Deathwing, excuse me, Deathwing, Warlords of Draenor, you know, Gul'dan and Archimonde, and Legion, you know, you, you're fighting off against, effectively, Sargeras and Argus himself. And... I feel as though at this point there should be a middle ground where you can still activate PvP and there are certain, potentially have a couple of areas that are not PvP. PvP isn't always enabled, but you can switch it on if you want because it is new territory, quote unquote. But the majority of the majority of the areas should be free for any player to go into. And I honestly feel as though you should be able to group with whoever you want. So if you want to raid with with players who are... If I wanted to raid with a group of players that were made up of, you know, humans, gnomes, draenei, all that sort of stuff, I should absolutely be able to do that because we have been doing that since Burning Crusade. It's just they haven't had that in there. I don't think it should be to the extreme of I should be able to stroll into Stormwind. I feel as though there are still areas where, you know, guards are still going to attack you, but I, it, it's more of a... You know, it's 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 kind of more of something along the lines of it makes sense for them to do this at this point. There is realistically no reason for them to stop people grouping together when it comes to, at the very least, raid. Because in the story, we've been doing it for so long. Why not have it part of the system? Not only that, but it also opens up the player base as well. It means that you're not stuck having to, you know, if you're on a, if you're on a realm that is a very, very low alliance population and you really like alliance, well, guess what? You're out of luck. This changes that. And it means that people can start to play together. Friends can start to play together more, especially if they've chosen different factions. I don't think it should go as to the, I don't think factions should be abolished. I think the restrictions on what factions can do should be loosened. And that's that's how I feel. Yeah, I, I very much share that consent, actually. And I think you're one of the few who has really worded exactly how I feel about it. So I think that that would be a very interesting way of doing it. Do you think Blizzard will eventually relent in so- doing something similar like that? I feel as though they will. It's, it's one of those that's been so requested and they've hinted at a couple of times BlizzCon Online. They had a couple of interviews during BlizzCon Online where they hinted at them looking at ways to change things around. And again, realistically, if you're going to do it, now's the time to do it. You don't, you don't, I, 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 I would find it very, very difficult to understand a group of people like the Horde and the Alliance that have effectively crossed the veil into the realm of the dead and fought against 
Zoval the Jailer, who is so hell-bent on the destruction of Azeroth, to come back into Azeroth after doing all of that, depending on if we see a time skip or not. That may potentially be a thing. I want it to be a thing. But, you know, to come back in and go, hey, that's my farmland. You know, it's it's I, I can't see that being a thing. And I I would be... I would be shocked if we don't see at least a change to raiding restrictions uh, in mm-hmm. the next expansion. Okay, okay. That would be very cool. Right, bit of a personal question. So, what has the Warcraft community meant to you? Um, see, that's, that's an interesting question because the Warcraft community as a whole, to me, mm-hmm. has, has, has realistically not... I mean, if you look at the if you look at the Warcraft community as a whole, let's not pretend that the Warcraft community isn't a whole isn't toxic as as all hell. It it can be a very very toxic environment. It can be a very very oppressing environment, and there definitely needs to be steps taken where people can feel a lot more comfortable. Unfortunately, when you effectively have uh, you know when you, when you effectively effectively just have a character in front of you and you don't really have any real world repercussions for what you say it's very very difficult to do that but i do feel as though the warcraft community could be a much friendlier place and there's absolutely nothing that i don't think there's anything that blizzard can do they've done a couple of things uh, especially in 9.1 where they've added that um they, they've added the the, the word Sort of like the, the, the specific words that you can filter, so people can't message you those words, which is which is a really good step. Uh, but realistically, the, the step, the biggest step, has to be effectively has to be through us. We have to be the ones to change the community. That being said, the amount of love and respect that everyone has for this world in the community is second to none. And I would say to every single person, if you have, I understand that, you know, that there's obviously a couple of different, various different situations, but if you ever have the chance to go to an in-person BlizzCon, I would a hundred percent, I would a hundred percent say you have to do it because Mm -hmm. there is a very, very different experience. This, this, it's, you know, I'm, I'm not going to go as far as say like, oh, it's a spiritual experience, but it's it's definitely a, it's something that I feel as though a lot of players have to do because it's all well and good watching the cinematics from home and going, oh, this is really cool, and the work that they do to put in the you know the online version of BlizzCon is phenomenal, and I'm not taking that away at all, but you when especially when you're sat there and you're watching, I was I was at the last the last in person BlizzCon 2019 my first time ever going to a BlizzCon. And I was sat in the crowd watching that cinematic when Sylvanas is taking on the Lich King. And just the, the the energy and the atmosphere that was in that room, it was it was unlike anything I've ever experienced before. And that kind of it really solidifies the feeling of no, this isn't just this isn't just a game that people play. This is, you know, this is something more than that. This is something that people thoroughly enjoy. And honestly, without the Warcraft community, um, I, I honestly, without the Warcraft community, I wouldn't be here talking talking to you right now. I would probably be in a warehouse somewhere, you know, stacking boxes. Not realistically that there's anything wrong with that, and there definitely isn't. In fact, it's it's probably one of it's probably one of the hard, most hardworking jobs out there. And mm-hmm. a lot of respect for people that do it. But at the same time. You know, it's afforded so many people so many opportunities that the you know, and I think there's there's no real way that you can take away from that. I mean, from the smallest you know, from the smallest streamer, I'm I'm not a big streamer in any way, shape, or form, all the way up to people like Asmongold, who you know, who are seen as as the pinnacle realistically of Warcraft streaming. Without the community, neither of us would be doing what we're doing. And, you know, I, for everyone that's listening to this, for everyone that, you know, is part of the Warcraft community, um, I, I, I can't thank you enough um, for what, you know, for what you've helped achieve building this community. And, and it's one that I, I look forward to seeing just how, you know, just how big it, just how big it can get over the years. Yeah, it will be really interesting to see how the, how this community grows. Um, now that we're already like on the ninth uh, version of World of Warcraft. So, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm very, very curious about that. Okay. Well, Kex, we've, we've landed on the final question of the interview. Okay. Uh, and the final question is, what is your whisper? And if this is the first time as a listener that you're uh, listening to this podcast and go like, what the hell is a whisper? Uh, that's my, uh, I'm not allowed to say failed experimental question anymore, but it's my, uh, <laughs> you know, my question that I somehow have to tie into the show title. So that's how I uh, have it. And uh, a whisper could be anything, really. It could be a wish that you have for the game, maybe game mechanics that you want implemented or taken out, theory crafting a little bit about the story or anything else that you would want for the game. So Kex, what would be your whisper? I technically have two. They can be connected but they might not be. My first one is I would like a thorough exploration of the alternate universe Draenor. Ooh. Obviously, for those of you that don't know, the Maghar Orc scenario where you basically bring them into the Horde for your allied race features you going back to Draenor about 30 years after Warlords of Draenor, and it turns out that Yorel and the Forces of Light have gone a little bit... They've, they, they've turned into zealots, effectively, mm-hmm. and they have purged anything that won't follow the light it seems as though the AU version of Garrosh is part of them which is quite interesting he is he is an orc soldier of the light so I would I would like an exploration of that I don't know whether or not that would come in the form of potentially like a small patch as a raid or an expansion but that is something I would like to go back and explore specifically to kind of put a little bit more of an emphasis on yeah the light is good and all but guess what happens when you get too much of it this is what mm. happens, and I'd like to see the, the the interplay between people like Tyrallian, Anduin, Velen, who are devout followers of the light, seeing what has become of it, if Anduin mm-hmm. survived Shadowlands, that is. We don't know at this point. And yeah, that, that, to me, that to me would be something very, very interesting. The other thing I would like to see, we've been told that time works differently in the Shadowlands. Give us a time skip, Blizzard. Give us a 50-year time skip for the next expansion. We do something funky in the Shadowlands. We get back into Azeroth. Guess what? Things Mm. have changed massively. And if you're ever going to do a change to the way factions work, that is the perfect time to do it. Over those 50 years, these factions have effectively just been not necessarily obliterated, but they've changed a lot more relaxed. The world is looking good. And not only that, it also brings the story back down to a very, very root um, a very root issue because we've obviously now we've passed through the Veil of the Dead and we're dealing with the Jailer and before that it was the ending of the Burning Legion and Sargeras stabbing a sword and obviously dealing with old gods looking to destroy our world and it's just been that for the past eight expansions mm-hmm. why don't we change something and make it smaller so instead of having to deal with these world ending scenarios or universe changing implications for all these expansions why don't we fix it so that instead of dealing with that, it's dealing with the changes that have that have been made, having to adapt to these various different situations, having to take back previously held things, and and how that affects the characters. You could see somebody coming back, for example, like um, to Rhonda, who has been this night warrior, and all of a sudden she finds out that the tree has been re-inhabited after these 50 years and she has to deal with the fallout of that because it is her home but at the same time it isn't her home Mm -hmm. if if you're going to do if you're going to do something along those lines now is the perfect time to do it blizzard and honestly i could i would be very very excited if they did that that would be really cool and they can finally take that freaking sword out of as all as all as well because that bothers me exactly exactly you know and you could even tie that into the storyline maybe the sword has gone or at this point maybe we come back in 50 years time and we're starting to see a couple of signs of this sword being an issue or they're trying to remove the sword at this point in time maybe one of the dungeons could be revolving around the sword you've got a lot of people trying to remove the sword and then you've got a lot of cultists that are trying to keep the sword in there they're trying to sabotage the efforts to remove the sword there's there's so many different stories that they could possibly do and honestly i i would love to see it's it's now is the time to do it yeah i i agree with you and i think that could be really really interesting as well because uh with 50 years for some characters that would mean that they age quite a lot Mm-hmm. Um, and for other characters, not so much. I think for a night elf, it doesn't really matter that much. But for other races, that is a big change all of a sudden. Oh, uh, 
That could, yeah, that could be really interesting. I like that idea a lot. I, I really hope that they're doing something with that. Um, Kex, thank you so much for, for being an amazing guest. If, if people want to follow you in everything that you do, where can they find you on the internet? Uh, so there are three places you can find me. So first one, obviously, Twitter. You can find me at Kexman. Very, very simple. Uh, you can find me over on Twitch, twitch.tv forward slash Kexman WCR. And you can also find me at Warcraft Radio, warcraftradio.com, where all our fantastic shows are. Um, I'm currently, I'm not currently hosting my own show that is on hiatus for the time being. But when that comes back, keep an eye out for a show called You Think You Do, But You Don't. That's that's the name of the show, and yeah, you'll find you'll find me on Twitch streaming. Um, obviously, keep an eye out also on Diablos, uh, Keystone Masters stuff like that as well. So uh, you know, if I ever do any casting in the future, I'll also retweet it on my own Twitter feed. Uh, that's pretty much where you can find me. Perfect, and I'll make sure that all those links are also in the show notes uh, so that everyone can look back at those and and add you on everything. But thank you again for being such a wonderful guest, and I hope that we can talk again in the future. Maybe once nine point one has hit, or you know, once we get a bit more knowledge about what's happening after we come back from the Shadowlands and to see if your theory is correct, and we can discuss that. Fingers crossed, fingers crossed. It would it would be an absolute pleasure to be back on the show. Thank you, thank you for inviting me on uh, today. It's been it has been a, a true joy. Ah, uh, and my pleasure. So I hope you enjoyed that interview I had with Caxman. It was lovely talking to him, and make sure that you follow him everywhere on the internet. Again, the links are in the show notes. Uh, but let's go to Twitter and Discord, where I asked the question. How are you guys enjoying 9.1? Are you enjoying it? Are you finding certain things disappointing? So I wanted to know everything and this is what you guys said. So let's go to let's go to Twitter first. So Twitter, uh, Demifernov said, I'm a neck deep and loving it. I like feeling overwhelmed at the start of a patch because it means there's a lot to go at. The cinematics are next level. It's been superbly done. Yeah, I agree. It's really, I like it when there's a lot to do and you have to figure it out. I mean, there are so many people who say, you know, just follow this, this and this. This is what you need to do to begin with. So it's it's not too complicated. Uh, Martin <laughs> said, wait, there's a new patch. Yes, there is. Uh, Go up to Mali he said, stars align slightly and wandering back to retail ever so slowly. The features all look fun so far and looking forward to checking them out myself. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if you have in the meantime. Um, of course, you can also answer the question of the week on Discord. And uh, the following was said. Mud said, I'm really loving the ability to ride in the mall now. They added at least 45 months for me to get. But it feels demoralizing to start fresh with a new broker reputation. Yeah, that I kind of understand. Um, but that riding in the mall is actually, that's true. I have to admit that I don't mind the mall so much now <laughs> because I can ride. Uh, Evander Lyle said, removing the eye of the jailer is one of my favorite parts of 9.1 so far. I'm spending more time there without having to worry about my stacks. Also, the update to Torghast is great. I made a group for a layer 9 Scaldus Halls and didn't care who joined because I knew we weren't going to get chased out if mistakes were made. Oh, that's really good. That's nice to hear. Um, I have to admit, I haven't been in Thorgast anymore uh, for a long time. I never saved for all. It never happened. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm happy that people are enjoying that. That's good. And I think, you know, that's such a unique feature. I'm hoping that Blizzard will build on that continuously. Swamp Kello said, um, I like the development so far. Even if Corfia is the mall with trees, <laughs> the environment is really refreshing compared to the default mall. Corfia feels very alien and ancient, probably thanks in part to its desaturated color palette, as well as its gnarled spindly trees and caves. Although I'm intrigued by the new mysteries, I'm hoping some of the outstanding questions about this expansion, like what Sylvanas' plan is, will be answered by the relics in the, this city of secrets. Got a second the removal of the eye, it's a totally terrifying mechanic, in a good way, and made the dangers of the mall feel a lot more palatable. Uh, palpable but from a gaming perspective it's only it's one less w thing weighing on my mind i'm less tentative about hopping down there now yeah i you know it does feel like oh i can't do too much because everything will try and kill me 
Uh, and now it's just like, oh, I'm running around. And I know it's probably for game reasons as well, because you have to do a lot more now in the Maw. But yeah, I think there's pros and cons for both. Alski said, uh, yay, I am enjoying it. First time trying war mode while questing. Very challenging at the moment, <laughs> I can imagine. Uh, and Shanti Man said, I'm very much enjoying it. New story, new zone, flying. Give it an A for now, but we'll see how I feel in six months. That's the thing, isn't it? I'm wondering um, if we're even going to get a new patch after this because we haven't heard anything about that at all. Uh, it might be a bit early. And uh, I know circumstances are still there. That it's not everyone is back into the office and the, the virus is very much still around. So everyone works differently, including Blizzard. I guess we'll just have to see what happens. Um, yeah, I have to admit, seeing you know my hesitation about the Shadowlands now after uh, about a year we're almost in into it for a year I am a little bit wary about you know the fact that we've I've, I've often said oh I'd love to go to a different planet uh, for the next expansions and just you know going to the universe and explore that I don't know if I do now because maybe what I'm missing is just Azeroth so, yeah, I, I have some stuff to, to reconsider, I think, with what I've said in the interviews before. We'll just have to see. We'll have to see. Like, again, I'm, I don't think Shadowlands is bad at all. I, I quite like it for what it is. I think the art is gorgeous. I have nothing against the story. I'm just not overly uh, invested in it, I guess. Um, again, I'm sure I, once I have a character that I absolutely adore, I will. But, yeah... It's, it's an odd one. It's an odd one for me. I guess we'll just see where it goes. It might just also be the time of year. You know, maybe maybe it's because it's summer and I'll be more into it in, in winter. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to really stay positive about it because there's nothing really to shit about. I know that in the media, a lot of people have um, started to really rip into World of Warcraft and I don't think that's fair. Um, I've played this game since the beginning and I still love it otherwise why would I pay for a subscription if I don't love it the only thing is this that I'm not overly invested at the moment and that's fine but I do get that when I play uh, classic so you know I still love the game but I'm just very curious to see where we're going from this uh, I I really would like something again like legion <laughs> more in that reaction or that direction so that's that's really it anyhow thank you guys for for listening for downloading and all of that stuff so here are all the links where you can find the stuff uh if you want to find the show in the show notes go to whispersofwar.podbean.com if you want to join the Discord, which is always great if you do, uh, you can also answer the question of the week there and have some input on topics or guests that you want to suggest. Or maybe if you want to be a guest, you can also uh, put yourself forward there. Discord.io forward slash whispers of war. And then, of course, there's Twitter at whispers underscore of underscore war. And my personal one is McMonkeys, MC Monkeys with a Z. Uh, email whispers of war podcast at gmail.com. And Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash McMonkeys with two Zs. And that's it. I hope you guys have a wonderful time in 9.1 uh, or in classic, depending on where you're. Uh, your drive is at the moment and i will talk to you all next week bye bye